This is Heian Wai, an ancient borderland where, for centuries, battles between Normans and the Welsh were fought to establish their authority. Though today, Hay can be seen as a quiet, rural Welsh town surrounded by green hills and gentle rivers. The scars left by the brutal conflicts played out here are never very far away. And the grandest of these is Hay Castle. A staging post for English expansion, it was also a target for Welsh assaults. Hay Castle has only recently been restored and opened to the public for the first time in its 900-year history. Haycastle has been the host to its fair share of fascinating characters, such as Matilda de Briuse, who was starved to death by King John in the 13th century. It became famous largely thanks to an eccentric bookseller who saw an opportunity in what was once this symbol of brutality to draw publicity and prestige to Hay as the world's first book town. I've come here today to learn more about those who lived here and in particular about the self-proclaimed King of Hay. This was once part of the Welsh Marches, a lawless region between England and Wales, infamous for its brutality and frequent violent unrest. This turbulent reputation dates back more than a millennium. In the 8th century, Offa, the Anglo-Saxon King of Mercia, would build a giant earthwork to mark the border of his authority, and it runs right through Hay. Offa's dyke symbolically cut Wales off from the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. When William the Conqueror took the crown of England in 1066, he found he could push his authority no further west than the old Offa's dyke. The Welsh weren't to be conquered so easily. That put Hay right on the new frontier between Normans and Welsh. It's the reason we have Hay Castle here and the whole string of castles all along the Welsh marches. It's all about the Normans trying to maintain and then push forward their frontier as the Welsh defended theirs. A castle was being built at Hay almost immediately after the Norman conquest. And what we see of the remains of the castle today are the work of the 12th century de Brieux family who stamped their authority on this region. Over the centuries that followed, the castle was attacked and damaged numerous times as part of Welsh revolts. Owen Glyndwr's rebellion at the start of the 15th century and then the Wars of the Roses in the middle of that same century. In the 17th century, a Jacobean mansion house was built here and it became a private home, keeping it alive into the future. But as late as the 20th century, Hay still retained this spirit of marcher independence. Hay was declared an independent kingdom by its amusing owner, very fittingly, on the 1st of April 1977. Yes, April Fool's Day. Richard Booth was born in 1938 in Plymouth. He went to rugby school and then to Merton College, Oxford. He was concerned that men like him, privileged and well-educated, were all too often removed from their hometowns to the detriment of those regions. When he inherited the Brenmillan estate from his uncle, Richard opened a second-hand bookstore in Hay and began to explore the ways local rural economies could be revitalised. It was this entrepreneurial spirit that transformed Hay on Wye into a world famous literary centre. Richard bought Hay Castle in the early 1960s and lived in the Jacobean mansion, hosting lavish and often raucous parties at the centre of an increasingly lively town. And here he is the man himself in stained glass, Richard Booth. He bought Hay Castle in the early 1960s and lived in it and partied in it, apparently one night partying so hard that one guest had to be removed from the portcullis hole by the fire brigade. 
He's the man who brought secondhand books and the book festival to Hay and made Hay world famous. And declaring it an independent kingdom is all part of the business strategy for that. But obviously Richard was king of Hay. He went by the name Richard Coeur de Livre, Richard the Bookheart. He made his horse his prime minister. He issued passports for travel to Hay. He was proud of it being in the marches of Wales. And he also had a few little other bits and pieces that made him king. He had a set of crown jewels, of course. How can you be a monarch without your crown jewels? A crown itself decorated with glass beads from a dog's collar. A scepter made from brass plumbing pipes with olives along the length of it. And an orb that's an old toilet ballcock. It pretty much sums up Richard Boo's approach to being King of Hay, really. Richard even created what he called his decision maker. So he would call council meetings and a motion would be put to the floor. Shall we have another party tonight? And then you spin the wheel to find out what the decision of the Kingdom of Hay is going to be. There we go, the party is on tonight. And of course, Hay Castle even had its own flag, the independent Kingdom of Hay's flag in the green and white colors with the emblem of Hay that would fly proudly above the castle when King Richard was in residence. Richard Booth's Kingdom of Hay was obviously part joke, part publicity stunt, and maybe part political protest. Nevertheless, it captures a marcher spirit, a spirit of independence, freedom from central control, an adventure that's always been at the heart of Hay on Wye. In 2011, Richard decided to sell Hay Castle. It was bought by a charitable organisation, the Hay Castle Trust, who've completed the fantastic renovation that we can visit today. Richard Booth will always be remembered as a genuine English eccentric who left a lasting mark on his beloved Hay on Wye. Right, who do I speak to about being the next King of Hay? If you'd like to learn more about this castle's fascinating history and the people associated with it, you can watch the full documentary at History Hit TV. Welcome to the History Hit YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you'd like to see more videos where we attempt to try and bring history to life, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Cheers guys, see you soon.